Hello, everyone. And here we are uh, into our third week now of the um, course, The Life of Christ. You've been having a lively discussion in your forum post, and I have been generally following them, but I haven't had a chance to make uh, comments or to grade your forums yet. So I will be doing that during this week. Uh, this week is considered spring break, but please note that for online courses, we don't have a break. We keep working. And this week also, you have a chance to dig into the Gospel of Mark. And we've read all of the background material, trying to get the social, um, uh, political, and uh, historical context of the Gospels. And now you will be uh, delving into the gospel itself, not only in the forum discussion that you have, uh, but also in the first gospel response paper. And I want to address the gospel response paper uh, because some people do make um, some mistakes there. They, they uh, don't think about those questions that I've listed carefully. First of all, when I ask the question, who are the people listening? Who are the people that the story or the what the pronouncement is meant for? A lot of students will say it's meant for Christians who's ever reading the, the scripture. I will not accept that because I want you to think in terms of who it was meant for in the context when Jesus is talking, who are the people listening to him? Who are the people present? That is what I want you to think about. I don't want to hear that it was for the early church or it was for us, because that was the reason the Gospels were written and, and uh, expressed uh, and kept for our understanding and edification. I want you to think about who the stories were originally intended for who were pre who were the people present at the time that Jesus was listening or, or that Jesus was speaking. Now, if I still get a lot of papers that say uh, it was intended for, for us, the wider church, then I'll realize that some people haven't been, uh, haven't watched this video. However, those of you who are smart enough to watch the video, please take note uh, of that. I will count down. Uh, I will take points off for those who uh, say it is for the broader Christian audience. So I hope I've made myself clear about that. Second thing I want to say about the uh, gospel response papers is uh, around the nature of conflict. People get a little um, confused about what is meant and when we speak of conflict in literature. And you know, most people think in terms of conflict as, um, you know, somebody's angry at you, uh, you have an argument. And when we're looking at the, the, uh, the portions of Mark that I want you to write your gospel response paper on, the conflict is the, the tension. What is the problem here? Uh, is it that somebody doesn't believe? Is it somebody needs to be healed? Is there some resistance from the Pharisees? That constitutes conflict. What is the barrier that Jesus is overcoming? What is the tension that Jesus is addressing? What is the, the, um, the even the hostility that might be present? So think in those terms, when it comes uh, the question about what is the nature of conflict. Once again, those of you who have seen this video will understand that. The nature of the conflict is what is taking place in the story, the, pr uh, the presenting problem or the tension that is building there, uh, something that is has to be overcome or some resistance that Jesus is experiencing on the part of the people, some group of people there. And the last thing I want to say about the gospel response paper is uh, you have been asked to identify either metaphor, hyperbole, or simile. 
And this is, uh, if it doesn't spring up naturally out of the context, that means that it is not present. Often the hyperbole is not present. Frequently there is metaphor, but I don't need you to stretch to see because not in every case will you find metaphor, simile, or hyperbole. Remember, metaphor is a comparison. Metaphor is uh, picturing something as something else. For example, when we talk about Jesus being the rock of our salvation, Jesus is a, literally a rock, but the characteristics of a rock uh, uh, is the metaphor for, uh, for Jesus. Uh, God, uh, the, the scriptures talk about the Lord is my shepherd. The Lord isn't literally a shepherd. That is a metaphor. Uh, for the way that God takes care of us. So their uh, metaphor is something that you'll come across frequently. Hyperbole, uh, yes, you will come across it occasionally, not always. And simply remember that hyperbole is uh, an exaggeration that's employed to make a point. When Jesus said, uh, if your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out, that is hyperbole because he's not literally saying, take your eye and pluck it out. He's saying um, that he's making a point of how serious it is uh, to allow something to cause you to sin. When he says, cut off your, if your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. That is hyperbole uh, because he's not literally telling you to cut off your, your hand. Now, the difficulty is. There are times when we are looking uh, so strongly for hyperbole that we impose hyperbole in a situation where it doesn't exist. So be careful with that. And this is this is the the um, the challenge of the parables of the sayings of Jesus. Is he speaking in hyperbole? Is he speaking literally? Uh, simile is the other thing that I've asked you to watch for. And remember that whenever a simile is also a type of comparison, and remember that when simile is used, the phrases like or as, uh, the word of God is like a lamp unto my feet. That is a simile, when something is like or as. So those are the keys. When you see a comparison and those one of those terms is used, like or as, then you know it's a simile. Uh, a wise man is like a man who built his house on a rock. That's a simile. That's a comparison. Those are the three things that I want you to watch for. And uh, then now the last thing I want to mention is that when you get towards the end of, of chapter 7 in our textbook, uh, the author describes some uh, theological themes in Mark. Pay attention to those theological themes. One of them has to do with Jesus as the servant. Uh, the, the concept of servant leadership comes out of Mark chapter 10, and you have your uh, forum post is related to that. Think carefully, this is in the context now, of what James and John are asking uh, of Jesus and think carefully now what it what's going on there. Jesus is about to die and he's talking about when he comes into his kingdom and James and John are asking for a particular, uh, particular request. What is it that they're actually requesting? Okay, I think that's, that's pretty much, I will try to get caught up on all the grading. Uh, you've already had your uh, definitions paper graded. Uh, I will grade your um, the the literary genres exercise. And if anybody is, uh, if you feel that that uh, redoing either one of those papers could give you a higher grade, then you're welcome to resubmit uh, either your definitions paper or the literary genres paper uh, to get a higher grade. Uh, if if you um, want to do that, let me know. 
So please uh, enjoy the reading of Mark. Uh, it's a delightful gospel to read. You can read that quickly. Uh, and uh, I hope that it will give you a deeper insight into the person of Jesus. Okay, I'll talk to you next week. Have fun and enjoy.